Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. We're on, we're on a journey here to balance you in all areas of your life. And to help you do that, we brought on today our very special guest. She is an author, a speaker, a coach, and her name is Lori McDowell. She's also part of our podcast community. She has her, has her own podcast on our channel. So I want you to go look for her because she has very motivational, inspirational, and great advice to help you on your way to your personal goals and your personal journey. So right now, I'd like to take you on to a topic that she is really great at, and she wants to share her advice, her tools, and her strategies on how to invest in yourself because you are worth it. You are worth it, and don't forget that. So Lori's here today, and she is gonna give you the amazing advice that you've been looking for for a long time. Lori, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. I always enjoy when you come on. You give such great advice, and your positivity is, is an outstanding. So tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Sure, Stacy, and thank you. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for this opportunity. So hi, everyone. Um, as Stacy said, I'm Lori McDowell, and I actually am a chemical engineer by degree. I have a PhD in chemical engineering, and I worked in corporate America for probably for over 30 years as a chemical engineer, and I needed to do something different. I wanted to do something where I, that I felt was more of my true purpose, and that's really helping people live a life full of joy and fulfillment and just really live the life they desire and that they're meant to live. So I try to help people, particularly, um, I work a lot with high achieving women, although I work with men as well, but people who are, they're successful, they have good jobs, they have a good business, yet they feel like something's missing. You know, they're successful on paper, but they're, they're not completely fulfilled or they're so burnt out or overworked that they don't take time for themselves. And I help them find joy, find fulfillment and create the life that really, you know, gives lets them meet their true purpose. I love it. And I think it's so important that people, you know, invest time in themselves because in today's society, I see so many women, they're so busy doing everything. And even men too, they're running around and they're doing everything they could possibly do. And they, the last person they invest in, the last person they give self-love or self-care to is themselves. And a lot of people, you know, believe it or not, they have shame or they have guilt about giving time to themselves to be able to give themselves some care and some love. They actually feel guilty or shameful because they feel like they need to take care of their spouse or they need to take care of their partner or their children, or they have these everything, you know, everything that they have to be doing and except for or taking care of themselves. And as you know, the first person that you need to take care of in order to take care of others is yourself. Now, when you talk about investing in yourself, what do you exactly mean by investing in yourself? There's a couple of different things I mean. Um, the first is really investing in your own personal growth, personal development. There, there have been studies done that they say less than not less than 10 10% of the population actually invest in themselves, whether it's self-care, so personal development, personal growth, taking classes, getting a coach. And those same studies have found that less than 10% of the population invest in themselves, but that but that 10% that does probably accounts for, you know, 80% of the success in the world. And those are the people that really they have great businesses, they have great careers, they have great lives because they do that. Because you know, you, you, we all feel like we wanna give and we wanna help other people. Yeah. But if you're operating at 60%, even if you give 100% of yourself, you're still only giving 60. Yeah. Because that's all you have. <laughs> so, you know, it's like on the, you know, I mean, there's a reason why when you're on an airplane, they tell you to put your oxygen mask first. Because if you're, you know, you're no use to anyone else if you're passing out. Yeah. So, the first part about investing is yourself is to really invest in, you know, your self care, your, your health, your, your mindset, your, you know, things like daily meditations, gratitude practices, um, healthy eating, exercise, just things that are going to reduce your stress that are going to make you more capable of doing more because you're, you have higher energy. You're not exhausted all the time. You're not running around and just, you know, doing so many more things. And and when you take that time to do those type of things, say you take an hour a day and you say an hour a day, I'm going to invest in, you know, mindfulness, breath work, uh, meditation, journaling. 
you will actually save more than that hour because you'll be so much more efficient in the other things you do. So it's actually, it's not really a time sink. It's a time savings because, you know, you may, you invest an hour in yourself and you get everything else done in two hours, less than it normally takes. So it actually helps you. Right. So that's the first part. And the second part is really more in the, the coaching area, um, the, the having someone who can really look at what you're doing and help you figure out where you can do more. Because uh, one of my favorite quotes is that you can't read the label from inside the jar. <laughs> we're all living it. You know, we're all inside the jar. So we don't we don't see things that other people do. And it's great to have friends who can give you, you know, friends or colleagues that give you advice. But the friends or the colleagues are, are always going to be nice. They're not going to usually tell you <laughs> yeah. what you really need to hear. Whereas if you're paying someone, whether it be a coach, a consultant, taking a training class, they're going to push you. They're going to be honest. They're going to be kind, but they're going to be tough and they'll really help move you. Yeah. So. Oh, I think that's, that's wonderful. I, you know, I, I think it's so true that if you have good people around you, then, you know, when you're trying to work on yourself, that's the first thing I love is that, you know, people always say I don't have the time, but if you do invest one hour into yourself, it's so true. Your clarity, your focus, your energy level, the way you feel, you know, about yourself is going to be so much more stronger and positive. And, you know, you're going to be able to do twice as much as you normally could just by investing in that one hour of time to yourself. And, you know, a lot of people don't look at it like that. They, they think of it as the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, I don't have the time. And they do have the time. Everybody has the time. It's prioritizing, you know. Uh, and then when you mentioned about, you know, having those people who are going to, you know, help you and be your cheerleader and root you on and, and you know, move you forward. You know, it's so important to have those people in your life. And I think sometimes people, you know, what do you do when you have people in your life and they're not rooting you on, or maybe they're not, you know, they're great people, but they're not positive energy and, and they kind of suck the energy out of you a little bit because of their mentality, you know, you know, what, what's your viewpoint on that? Yeah. Yeah. There's a real, another quote, there's um an actor, I think his name is um Tyree Henry or something like that, but he has, a, I read, heard him on a podcast one time and he had a quote that he said, if the people around you are not supportive, then you don't have a supportive circle. You actually have a cage. Yeah. And I just, I love that because it's so true. You know, once that's one of the things, you know, when you invest in yourself, when you do grow, hopefully you will take the people around you with you and they will grow. Yeah. Yet you need to, um, you need to be willing to, if they're not willing to come with you, you do need to be willing to let them go. I mean, it doesn't yeah. mean you have to completely not never see them again, but you don't want, you want to surround yourself with people who are going to help you grow, who are going to uplift you, who are going to be positive. Yeah. And if the people around you aren't like that, then you want to minimize your time with them. You know, maybe you socialize with them, you go out and you have dinner, but you don't want to have them be in your corner and in your ear, because there's a lot of people who, you know, are threatened by your growth and they, they may be trying to hold you back because they're not they haven't found it in themselves ideally you'll find you'll help those people find it in themselves and you you can all rise together yeah but if not it it, it, it does mean you know you have to if you want to live in this future where you have this amazing life and where you're doing it, what you love you have to be ready for it and that sometimes does mean letting go of your past letting go of the things that were part of that and if you're yeah. not willing to do that you're going to hold yourself back Oh, a hundred percent. And, and, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because that's something I, I hear from a lot of people as they became more successful, a lot of people either withdrew from them or they were like, oh no, you shouldn't do that when they really should do that because they were kind of feeling, I think maybe fearful, or maybe they felt a little, their self-esteem or self-worth was getting a little, you know, uh, tampered with because they, didn't want to see their, their friends move above them, you know? And you know, I, I hear that from a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think it's necessarily like it's conscious. It's not like your friends are tr trying to hold your back. It's just right. that they're not in the place, you know, as you, as you do invest in yourself, as you spend time doing things like meditation, self-care, as you get coached, as you take training classes and personal growth, 
you you see things in a new life and you see possibilities that you never saw before. It just, it really does expand your mind because you learn, you know, 90%, not only do 90%, I'm saying a lot of 90%, but not only do 90% of people not invest in themselves, but 90% of what we do every day is kind of automatic. Yeah. Our unconscious mind does it and we don't really think about it. Yeah. And when you start to invest in yourself and get things like coaching and personal development and classes and do those type of things, you get in touch with those automatic behaviors and you're not, you're not just automatically doing it. You're thinking about what you're doing and, and, and that opens up possibilities. It opens your eyes to things you never saw before. And the issue is the people who haven't done that are still not seeing that. So yeah. if someone's telling you, oh, you shouldn't do that. It's not like they're trying to hold you back or they're trying to hurt you. They are, truly are trying to protect you, but they don't see the world the way you do. Right. Yeah. It, it's very true. Now, what are some of the ways people can start investing in themselves? Like, what are some of the things like when, when you talk about um, taking time for yourself and, and starting to really look into self-development and look into different things, if someone says, I want to better myself, I want to invest more time in making myself, you know, a better person because I, I want to get elevate to the next level in life. I want to, you know, become a, a better person and see my, I can see myself, you know, here, you know, what would you say to them? Like, what are some of the things they could start changing in their lives that would have, you know, a really huge impact? Yeah. I think the first thing I would say is um, start a mindfulness practice every day. It, it doesn't have to be long. I mean, there, there's an, there's an app and I don't get any money from this. I'm not, I'm promoting it because I use it and I love it. It's called insight timer. It's, you know, it's free on your phone or on your computer and it has, thousands of meditations some as short as two minutes some a couple hours but find something you like a five minute meditation um, a lot of them are on gratefulness or affirmations and just do five to ten minutes of meditation when you wake up every morning and maybe another five to ten minutes before you go to bed and that just that alone kind of it slows your heart rate it slows your breathing it, it gets you set up for the day and it starts you thinking in a different way so that's something that I do just about every day then the next thing I would recommend is um, a grateful, you know, get a journal a great, and, and write in your journal a, gr a gratitude practice. When you wake up every morning, list three things you're grateful for. Write them down and try not to make them the same thing every day. And because and, when you look for grateful things you're grateful for, um, being grateful doesn't just, you know, help the people you're grateful for or, or that, but it actually makes you feel better. Being grateful lifts up your positivity. It lifts up your vibration. Yeah. So those are two things, like I said, and together they take less than 15 minutes a day to do. And I recommend you do them. And if you do it for a month or two months, you'll actually, you'll see a difference. You will find that good things start happening to you, that you, you notice things that you didn't notice before. And, and a lot that alone is a good start. And then, like I said, the, the next is I would, I would invest in a coach and it doesn't have to be something long-term. It could be one coaching session yeah, or group coaching or join, you know, there's a lot of online programs that are very low and expensive. I mean, I do coaching with clients that, you know, one hour is like $200. If you are not willing to invest $200 in yourself or so, yeah, um, because a coach will actually see things you won't and they can give you, um, they can give you tips you know, they can give you some guidance. They can help you see where you're, um, where you're strong and where you're not and, and give you a plan. You know, ideally you'll have a coach. I have like six coaches and I have coaches for all different aspects of my life Yeah. because I, I don't want to take, you know, I want to do it quickly. I want to get to that highest energy and that highest vibration and that life of yeah. abundance as soon as possible. But it's funny because, you know, if athletes, uh, an athlete would never consider not having a coach. Right. Most CEOs, I mean, most CEOs of large companies have a coach, yet the rest of us kind of figure we can do it on our own. When I worked in corporate America, I always thought my company would invest in me, that I didn't need to have a coach or pay for myself. And, and I was so wrong because the company invested in what I could do to help them. Yeah. But they didn't really invest in me. They didn't really care about my personal development. And right. I, I met a woman who was a coach like probably about 15 years ago and you know, I had taken her free program that I had won in a contest and it was great. I loved it. And then she yeah. wanted to work with me and I was just like, oh, like, I don't have time and I don't have money, which I had both if I wanted to. And yeah. 
you know, I so regret I didn't do that 20 years ago because I feel like had I done that, it would have just really opened my eyes, made my career more successful. Just, you know, maybe I would have started my business many years sooner, but it just yeah. would have helped me so much. So I would say, um, have, have a coach, you know, and it does, it could be me, it could be you, it could be anyone, but find right. someone that, that you feel connected to and have, you know, at least schedule an hour with them one hour. So you could at least find out what they see in you and where, how they can help you. Yeah. And then the, the other is um, the free gift regarding the free um, assessment that I'm giving you. Um, it's hard to know where you're going unless you know where you are. Yeah. And, you know, I have this assessment, I call it celebrate soul success. And it kind of looks at the different areas of life and you can see like where you're strong. You know, I'm really strong in relationships, but my finances are struggling. I'm really strong in my career, but my personal is struggling. And by looking at that, you can see what area you want to focus on or, you know, what type of coach do you want? Do you want a financial coach? Do you want a business coach? Do you yeah. want a, a life coach that so finding out where you are, where, what your strengths and your weaknesses are. And there are many types of assessments. Um, this is just one that takes about five minutes, but knowing where you are, is great to start. Oh yeah. And I, I agree with you. You know, it, I have several coaches myself and, 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 and it helps so much. And I remember when I first got a coach, you know, years ago, I was like iffy about doing it. And I was like, oh, I don't know, you know, it's, it's expensive and blah, 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 blah. And it really wasn't expensive. It was just me fearful of taking the next step, you know? And, and uh, once I did it, it was like, it changed my life. It just opened me to new doors. It opened me to seeing things differently. You know, the coach, my coach taught me different ways of approaching things that I never would have thought of on my own. And I really, you know, highly suggest to people, you know, take the step, you know, take the chance, you know, because coaching is, is something that really could help someone grow, especially if they're plateaued or they're stuck or they're not sure how to do things the right way. You know, it, it can make such a world of difference in your life. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. When you're stuck or when you're in a, you know, at a crossroads or you're just trying to figure out what to go next, it, it's it's great to get someone's opinion, especially someone who's seen a lot of things and has worked with a lot of different people because they can actually, you know, give you advice that you can't get, you know, elsewhere. Um, the one other thing as far as investing your in yourself is, um, you know, and this is something that you can probably do without spending any money. Um, it will take some time. It's just, you know, always be continually learning. I mean, reading self-help books or book, or even just reading, not reading books. I, I recommend you read a, you know, a book a week. It's just yeah. reading really helps. If you don't like to read, listen to a book a week. And there's so many great books that can help you. And just, there are so many classes that you can take online or courses yeah. or, you know, things, summits, listening to speakers, because we learn, we learn so much when we hear something and, you know, you should be learning something new every day because by learning you grow. And then once you start learning, you'll find you learn from your mistakes. When you, when you make a mistake, instead of being upset about it or something goes wrong, instead of being worried, you're like, Oh, what can I learn from this? How can I use this to do something different? And yeah. it just changes your mindset completely where you're never in a mindset where things are, things are never negative. They're always opportunities. Yeah. And once you get in that, where you're looking, for, you know, to be continuously improving and continuously learning, if something happens, you're like, Oh, what can I pick up from this? How can right. this help me next time? What can I, you know, what would I do differently? Yeah, no, it's so true. It's so true. And, and I, I think it too, you know, I, I love the fact that you talk about journaling too. It's, it's important to keep a journal. And, it, and I think even when you're investing in yourself, you know, to have a gratitude journal, to have a journal where you can express your feelings and then to keep track of what you're doing, you know, as if you're trying to grow, you know, um, to really analyze and look back and, and see, you know, are you progressing, you know, and if you're not, you know, maybe go to that coach or go to, you know, or or, or try to figure out what's holding me back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other really good thing about journaling, and I just learned this myself recently, but um, you know, a lot of what we do is when we, you know, meditate or when we do breath work or anything is we're working with our unconscious mind. Yeah. And we have these great thoughts or sometimes, you know, you might be going for a walk and you, you, you just see in nature, you have these great thoughts and then, they're, they're kind of come from your unconscious mind. Yeah. And when you write them down, 
they go to your conscious mind. So it's a way by writing down something, you know, something you learned. Once you learn it, write it down, journal about it, because that makes it more permanent. Because once your conscious mind and your unconscious mind both know it, it stays. Yeah. Or if one of them knows it and the other half doesn't, it ends up, you know, at, over time it disappears. So by journaling, you actually make things more permanent. So when you have a good experience, you know, when you get home, write about it, talk about what you enjoyed, what you learned and put all that in your journal, how you felt. Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. And I think a lot of times, you know, if something comes to you, write it down right away, because a lot of times when those things, you know, come into our heads, when those thoughts come into our heads and we don't write them down, we forget them, you know, mm -hmm. that's the problem. But if we keep a journal and it's great to keep a journal by your bedside and even like a, you know, a friend of mine had written a book about affirmations and, and, you know, just to have that book by my bedside, I used to look in that book in the morning and it would put me in a, my mentality in a whole different area because it would be so enlightening. Some of the affirmations that he had written and uh, it was, you know, it just, you know, those little things that you can do, you know, that don't take a lot of time could be so um, life changing changing and can really put you on that track of, of really, you know, elevating your life to the point where you're, you're going in the area that you want to be in, in life. Yeah, Stacey, that is so true. I, I love like the idea of affirmations and just talking to yourself in, in a positive way, because your, your language makes such a difference as well. Cause you're, like I said, your unconscious mind doesn't know, it can't tell the difference between fact in fiction. So it doesn't, yeah. if you say I'm amazing or I, I'm going to, I've achieved success. I'm a successful business person. Yeah. Your unconscious mind doesn't know if it's true or not. So it assumes it's true. Right. The, the same way negative, that's why negative talk is so dangerous and affirmations are so good because if you talk about, oh, I, I messed up again. I, oh, I can't believe I failed this again. Your brain starts, your unconscious mind starts to think, oh, shut up messed up, failed, failed again. So they think that's what you want. Cause that's what you're saying over and over again. I think yeah. this person was like failing. We're going to give them that. Right. So if you say all these affirmations, your unconscious mind says, Oh, they want joy. They want love. They want success. They want happiness. And it's going to yeah. say, okay, this is where they want to go. Let's give them that. Right. No, that's so true. You know, and, and what we put in our minds, you know, plays a big role on, on who we become, because if we, you know, if we really put a lot of positive thoughts into our head and we really, you know, start writing down things and journaling, like you mentioned, and really, you know, taking time out to meditate and clear our minds and put those positive thoughts within us, you know, we start to strengthen ourselves and restart to really manifest that positivity into our lives. And, and we, we begin to change as an individual not even realizing it yeah no that's so so true um yeah the one other thing I would like to say about investing in yourself and this one you know some people find it really hard but it really is very simple is if you need help just ask for it yeah if there's something you don't know ask someone because people you know if, if you help someone you know, if, when I help someone, it makes me feel really good. Oh, I help them. And they feel yeah. really good about themselves. So when you're asking someone for help, don't feel like a burden. You're giving them the opportunity to feel good about themselves by helping you. Yeah. And, you know, they'll say no, if they don't want to don't feel they have the right to say no, if they don't want to help you or if they can't do it right now. But don't always if you need something, ask if they say no, it's okay. It's not a, it's not about you. It's not. It's just they didn't have time or they didn't have the expertise. But the people who don't ask for help really find that they're, you know, you're, that's a self-limiting behavior by not asking for something that you need. Because if yeah. you, people don't read your mind, they don't need, there's so many people that would love to help you. Yeah. And it doesn't, they'll, you know, often they'll love to help you with no strings attached. They just like to help. So if you don't yeah. ask for it, they can't do that. And, and they don't know what you need. So if you need help with, you know, whether it's technology, whether it's advice on a, should I, I take this career path, whether it's, I have a problem I can't, I'm stuck at, you know, the first step I would say is just ask someone that that's maybe an expert in the area or someone, you know, Hey, could you help me with this? Or do you know this? And yeah. chances are, you're going to get good advice. That's so true. You know, and I think the biggest problem is, is that a lot, I hear it all the time. People don't want to ask someone because they feel like they're an inconvenience. And I hear that so much. 
And, you know, and I, I think when I was younger, I felt like that also. But then when I did ask people for help, they 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 seemed so happy to help me. And you could tell it was an inconvenience, you know. And I, I think people have to get that out of their head, that they're not a burden. Because, you know, I don't know why, but people feel like if they ask somebody for help, they're inconveniencing them or they're being a burden mm -hmm. to that person when they're really not. No, and, and and usually, like I said, I I love when people ask me for help because I like to help people. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and sometimes people don't ask for help because they feel like it's going to make them feel like they're you know they're a failure or they're they're not smart enough. But I, I love there's a um, Steve Jobs tells a story. I've heard him tell the story about when he was a young kid and he called up um Mr. Mr. Hew Hewlett, the owner of Hewlett Packard. Yeah. He was like 12 years old or so. And he called him up and he said, you know, asked him, he's like, oh, I'm trying to build a computer and I'm trying to get this part and I don't know where I get it. Can you help me? And um, Mr. Hewlett was so like, oh, sure. And he sent him all these parts and they developed this like lifelong friendship that probably had it, you know, had he not asked for help, who knows, you know, yeah, what, 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 what we would be missing today. I mean, that could have changed the world. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, sometimes when, when people see other people trying to better themselves and trying to do something to, to make, you know, to overcome things and they want to help that person, they want to see that person succeed. You know, a good person is going to want to see someone, you know, um, you know, go to the next level and, and, and become, you know, the person they want to become or get out of the, the rut that they're in and, and be able to move forward in life, you know, that makes people feel good that they were a part of that, you know, and I, I think that's so important and that's such a great point that you made. Yeah, no, definitely. So yeah, like I said, in, investing in yourself, taking, you know, whether it's, there's so many different ways to do it, but they're all positive. None of the, the downsides are very minimum. I mean, the worst case, you know, you, you have, you invest time, you invest money or someone said they can't do it right now, but there's no, there's really no downside. Yeah. Is there, can, can you tell us a little about the book that you wrote? Cause I would love to hear more about it. Sure. Sure. The book that I wrote is called the reinvention mindset. And it's, um, I was inspired to write it by a woman who, I did at one of her charity 5k events and I found out that she, when she was like in her mid thirties, she was diagnosed out of the blue. She just started having these symptoms and she was diagnosed with MS wow. and she had like 29 of the 31 possible symptoms. She was suddenly in a wheelchair and all the doctors told her like, well, there, you know, there's nothing we can do. You know, maybe we can give you some drug that will help with some of the symptoms, but this is going to be the rest of your life. And she, she didn't accept that. She said, you know, she, she decided, no, it's not. And she yeah. kind of asked everyone she knew, looked at every, every doctor, every holistic nutritionist, exercise, yoga, meditation. I mean, she tried hundreds of strategies yeah. and she found things that worked and she's basically cured all of her symptoms. And if you met her now, like when I heard her speaking, I was amazed, like, cause this was, this woman was vibrant, energetic, you know, up there at exercising had lots of energy yeah and she had so she started a nonprofit called the phoenix journey to help um other people with autoimmune diseases learn that they don't have to accept them and how they can take these different things to help themselves yeah and she started me thinking about so many people who have horrible things happen to them and they turn it around and do something amazing yeah and then there are other people who have something bad happens and it just stops them forever they just get stuck yeah. And so I started interviewing the people that did the amazing thing and trying to see what it was about, you know, is it something inherently in them that they were different or what is it about them that enabled them to do it? And I learned it was a lot about their mindset and that they were just doing able, willing to do things like asking for help, like yeah. believing in a higher power, um, like knowing that, um, you know, anything was possible. They faced their fears and learned to overcome them. Yeah. So I put it all, all these things together in a book so that anyone can read it and, and read these stories and learn about these things. And so you don't have to wait till something bad happens to change your life. If your life's not what if you want it to be, you can start implementing these things today and it'll, it'll be better. I love it. I love it. You know, and where can people find this book? Um, the book is on Amazon and it's also barnesandnoble.com and, um, or you can look at, uh, you know, just the reinvention mindset.com. 
that'll take you directly to my page where you can get it as well. And it'll be coming out as an audio book in the next couple, maybe the next month or so. I'm in the process of having that done. So right mm -hmm. now it's an ebook and a, and a paperback. Oh, I love it. And, and you also do have programs available to help people. Can you tell us a little about that? Sure. Yeah, I do have a, um, I have a one day workshop. It's called um, Passion or per it's called Purpose, Power and Play. And what it is, is it's, it's a one day workshop that really helps you get your sense of purpose, get your connect with your intuition. Um, it's, it's, it's really full of exercises. I do it both vir virtually and live I, where I live in Houston area. So depending on if you like virtual or live, yeah. um, the, the next one is December 5th, but I'm going to be doing it routinely. So um, at the link, which is um, joy.reimagineyou.net power purpose play power dash purpose not play you can find that information it's a 97 dollars workshop so it's not a big investment for a one-day event and it really wow. will i mean i i think it'll it definitely will start you on this amazing journey where you learn to get in touch with yourself and and have fun you yeah. when when you're really operating in that place where you know you're life is you're doing the right thing and you're doing things that let you and you're making a difference and you're being successful it's joyful as well and so many people who you know there are a lot of people that are successful on paper they have great salaries they have great titles they have good jobs yet they work so hard and they they, they don't enjoy themselves yeah they're so busy you know they're burnt out they're overworked they're not they're missing out on their families their kids their life because they're so focused on your career. And I believe you can have even better success, but still have fun and still enjoy life and feel fulfillment. And this workshop takes you through a lot of exercises to help you get started there. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now you also do a lot of speaking. So you, you are a speaker as well. And you speak on, I, I assume you speak on all these type of motivational topics. Yes. Motivational, inspirational, really how you can live the life you desire. Cause I, I believe that we all have everything we need inside of us already, or we know how to get it. And we just, we, we suppress all that. And I help people, I speak about, you know, that everything is possible when you come from the right mindset, when you learn to trust yourself, when you believe, when you get rid of the things that are holding you back, there's so right. much possible. So I speak at summits, I'm available for keynotes keynotes talk at conferences or universities or various different places. Oh, I love it. And you also have like an assessment test test that they could do on your their your website, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a five minute assessment test that really tells you like where you are today, so you know where to move forward. Oh, I love it. Now, if you had to take today's conversation and you wanted to really emphasize on some important factors, what are some of the things you you would like to emphasize on today's conversation? I would emphasize to spend you know at least at least 15 minutes a day, preferably an hour on, on yourself, whether it's, you know, I, I would recommend everyone do some kind of meditation or mindfulness or breath work every day, some kind, you know, a few minutes journaling every day and then focus on your health, you know, yeah. focus on getting, getting outside, doing some movement, because all of that is just going to give you so much more energy and so much more to get your day done. And then, like I said, I would look into finding someone who can help you. Um, ideally, I think a coach looking in, look into, you know, at least talk to a coach. If you've never spoken to a coach, yeah, make an appointment with someone, um, yeah. you know, follow what you can call me. And if it does, if I don't resonate, tell me what you want. And I, I know hundreds of coaches I can recommend you somewhere else. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely worth, you know, if you haven't done that, or if, even if you have, if you let it go, look at doing it again. Cause I think it makes a huge difference in life and, and, you know, it could be something ongoing. It could be some one time, but it really will. It'll give you a perspective about yourself that you don't have. That's right. You know, what's guaranteed. I love it. And now where can people find you? Um, my website is uh, my company is called reimagine you like the letter. So the website is reimagineyou.net. And then um, you can, my email is lmcdowell at reimagineyou.net. And if you're interested in booking a call, you can just go to booklori, L-O-R-I dot com. And you can book a call with me there. And I have, you know, you can book a 15 minute call or a 30 minute call and we can do a Zoom and just talk. Oh, I love it. I love it. 
This has been amazing. I, you know, I, I love the the topic today because I think it's so important because, you know, people have to realize that in order to get to the point they want in life, in order to feel good about themselves, in order to grow, you know, they, they really need to invest a little time in themselves. And, and so many people, you know, don't feel like they're worth it and, and they are. And it's so important that people take time out to, to make themselves, you know, feel good and to, to clear their mind and to really understand who they are. And, you know, and to really understand what they need to work on and, and learn, you know, ways to do that, which is to have a coach like yourself, you know, that could guide you along the way and, and, you know, help you along those stepping stones, you know, so I think it's great what you're doing. I, I love the fact that you're helping people in, in so many different ways and invest in yourself is, is such an important factor because I think a lot of people, they want to invest in themselves, but they're, they're scared, you know, or, you know, they just, you know, they make excuses up, you know, but it's, you know, if you really want to improve your life and improve your mind, body, and soul, you really have to, you know, take time out and really invest in yourself. Like you said. Yeah, no, I agree. I think you definitely, you know, we want to, I, I, I think the world would be a better place if that, instead of being that 10%, if that were 20% or 30% or 50%, yeah. because, those are the people that the people who invest in themselves are the ones who really do make a difference in the world. And, and, you know, it, you, it can be life-changing, not just for you, but for so many other people. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. This has been amazing, Lori. I thank you so much for coming on the show today. And I, I just love, you know, um, your, the, everything that you talk about it, you know, because it's so important that people really open their lives up and really look inside themselves and really, you know, be honest with who they are and, and really, you know, think about what they can do to make themselves be the person they want to be. Because I think everybody deep down inside has this, you know, this image of who they love to see themselves as. And it's, you know, I always say just like Walt Disney, like you can always make your dreams a reality. You know, you just have to believe in yourself and, you you know, and take the first step. And I think investing in yourself is the first step. So I, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. You made such a great point and you gave such great advice. So thank you so much. Thank you, Stacey. It was a pleasure to be here. Oh, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, like always. Thank you. You have a great day. You too.